Okay, so today I want to give you a run through the bag valve mask. And I think this is a device that most of us just pick up and use without giving very much thought to how it works. But it's actually quite a complex device with multiple parts and a number of valves. And I'll give you a quick run through how it works now. So the main part is this self-inflating bag. So whenever I squeeze it, it self-inflates. It reinflates itself without needing a gas supply. And this makes it really useful that it can actually be used without oxygen supply. You've got a reservoir for oxygen at the back, and then you've got this little T-piece device, which allows you to get your gas to the patient and then out again to the environment. Um, so I'll start with the back of it. So you've got this reservoir, um, and it's connected up. If you connect the oxygen pipe up to oxygen, you can fill this with oxygen. You've then got two little valves on here, and one valve in between the self-inflating bag and the reservoir bag. So the valve in between the reservoir and the self-inflating bag at the moment is in the open position. So it allows any oxygen to flow freely, filling up the self-inflating bag after it's been squeezed. Whenever you squeeze the bag, you obviously you want your gas to go out to the patient and not back into the reservoir bag. So the valve closes whenever you squeeze the bag. There's two little valves on in behind this, and they're both safety valves. And you'll notice at the moment, whenever I squeeze the bag, this top little valve is moving. And the reason it's doing that is because I don't currently have any oxygen flowing through the, bag, through the system. So when I squeeze the bag, it's in training air from the environment to refill the bag again. Had I had enough oxygen in this to meet the bag's demand, it would take it from the reservoir bag and this little valve will stay closed. So I'm going to show you that. Now if I turn on the, the oxygen supply and fill up the reservoir bag, and what you'll now notice when I squeeze the bag, this little valve at the top is no longer moving. So the reservoir bag is, is filling up the self-inflating bag after it's delivered gas to the patient. This other little valve is also a safety valve, and it comes into play whenever pressure in the reservoir bag is too high, and it's a little blow-off valve. So at the moment, it's in the closed position. If I was to increase the flow, what you'll notice is this then pops open to an oxygen box. So you can see here, this valve is now fluttering and open, allowing excessive oxygen to not build up and overinflate the reservoir bag, potentially causing it to burst. So if I bring that back down again, I'm actually able to turn it off for the purposes of this video. So at the back, reservoir bag and three valves. One valve between the self-inflating bag and the reservoir bag open all the time, apart from when you squeeze the bag. And that just prevents what's in the bag going back into the reservoir rather than going out to the patient. The top valve is in the closed position. If there's enough oxygen coming from the reservoir bag, it stays closed. If there's not, it entrains room air to fill the self-inflating bag up again. And this bottom valve is again in the closed position and only opens when there's excessive pressure in the reservoir bag, allowing it to blow off rather than causing the reservoir bag to become over-distended and potentially burst. So going on to this end of it, so whenever I squeeze the bag, you'll notice there's another little valve just here. So if I squeeze the bag, it moves forward. And what it's doing is letting gas from the self-inflating bag move out to the patient from here through here. So the next thing that has to happen is after you've given a breath to your patient, the valve moves out and lets gas move from the self-inflating bag to your patient, your patient's going to want to expire that gas. And if they were to expire it back into the self-inflating bag, you would get a mixture of expired gas and fresh gas. And this is where this little valve comes in. So it's only when you squeeze the bag that it opens. And then it, once you finish squeezing the bag, it goes back to the closed position. And this means when the patient expires, they can't expire back into the self-inflating bag. And they have to expire out this expiratory port here. So you can see it here. This is where the expired gas goes out. And this little expiratory port can just come off to allow a peep valve to go onto here. So gas comes from here. When you squeeze the bag, the valve opens. 
the gas gets to the patient. Once you finish squeezing the bag, this valve closes and the only place the patient can expire is out this expiratory port. Um, there is one more valve on this bag valve mask and this is a high pressure blow off valve over here. You'll notice when I'm ventilating the patient with normal pressures, this doesn't move at all. If I was to use excessively high pressures, you'll notice this opens and lets excessive gas blow off rather than delivering high pressure and potentially injuring the patient's lungs. If I want to, I can manually override that by pulling this little white clip across and then I'm going to be able to deliver high pressure to the patient. There may be certain clinical situations where you need to do this, but most of the time this should be left off and only turned on if you really need it. So how do we use it? First thing you want to do is turn the oxygen flow on and make sure your reservoir bag is filled so that you're delivering high concentration oxygen to the patient and you're not going to entry in room air. You then want to just squeeze your bag just gently and just enough to inflate the chest. So you're watching for chest lift. And you can see here for this small baby, I'm really only having to squeeze the bag a small amount to provide adequate ventilation. One of the things you'll notice is the lungs are collapsing down at the end of each breath. And that's because I don't I currently have any way to deliver PEEP. There's no resistance to expired gases coming out this valve. What I can do is put a PEEP valve onto here. So if I take this cap off and put a PEEP valve on. So there now is resistance to gas coming out and I can adjust the resistance by turning this one way or the other. So now when I'm bagging the patient, I can deliver a little bit of PEEP and you'll notice that the lungs aren't collapsing quite as much as what they were doing before.